This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with Michael Davis, just two and a half weeks out from Sheffield. We discuss his prep and goals for Sheffield, his battle with the Mill Norling at IPF Worlds in 2022, and how he transitioned from equipped to raw powerlifting and a bunch of fun questions to help you get to know Michael a little better. We cover a lot in this short episode, but before I bring Michael in, don't forget that tickets are still available for Sheffield happening on March 25th. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to get into drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting america.com, become a member, check out our event page for all of our upcoming events and our store page for PA merch, and be sure to follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Okay, now let's get to this quick check in with Michael Davis. All right, what's up, Michael Davis, 2022 105 kilo national champion and silver medalist at Worlds? How you doing, man? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. <clears throat> Coming off a busy season and headed right into another busy season here. So, um, in in general, how are you feeling right now, man? Everything going good? Uh, I mean, I'm two weeks out. So, anyone who's done a prep knows what you feel like two weeks out. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm getting by. Doing all right. Yeah, so we're like two and a half weeks out from Sheffield about. Um, and so, how excited are you about Sheffield? I mean, I said it in one of my YouTube videos recently, like biggest meet of all time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it maybe, I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. At least the biggest meet I've ever done. Um, the most on the line, the most prestigious, um, just the way they're setting it up, athlete interviews, athlete meets, um, yeah. the venue. I mean, everything just makes it seem so big. So, I mean, I feel good. I'm excited. Yeah, man. I'm super happy for you that you got the invite and everything. Um, Really cool. How many people from Power of Team America, Team USA are going to be represented at Sheffield? So like it's it's basically like another fun meet for us. Um, We're really looking forward to seeing all the the U.S. lifters show out and bring back some some money and, um, you know, just show off on the biggest stage. So how how strong we are here in the U.S. Um, So Going into Sheffield, what are your goals? What kind of, uh, what kind of, what are you looking to do at Sheffield? You know, the scoring, I was talking to my homies about this the other day. Like, they were like, oh, are you going to win? And it's like, of course I want to win. But like, the scoring is so, is like weird. Like, you have to beat the record in your own weight class. Like, certain people's records are set higher. I mean, I think in comparison to like the weight class than other people's records. So it's like, I'm kind of competing against the world record first in my weight class. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm just going to break the world record total and, and BD meal. And then I do those two things. And then it's kind of like, and then put my best day out there. And then it's, after that, it's kind of just like, where do I lie in the fold of all these other great lifters? You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's like, I can't, I can't control what Taylor's going to do. I can't control what Jesus going to do. Yeah. Uh, Keiko. I can't control what anyone's going to do, but so my goal is just go break the world record um, put up my best total, put up my best lifts, control what I can control. And then we'll see where everything lands after that. Yeah. I mean, and then on the individual lifts, are there, are there any world records that you're looking at? Like, it's looking like you're pretty close on bench. Yeah. My bench feels really good right now. I mean, we say pretty close. I mean, I hit 501 in training. The record's like fall at 514 or something. If we're talking pounds. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that's a big deal on bench. 14 pounds is, is huge, especially after you've been training for 10 years. I have been feeling really good. Um, we got a couple more big sessions just to kind of gauge where I'm at. Um, so, yeah, I would love to hit that record. Uh, I'm thinking I just go 501 on the second attempt. That, that normally wouldn't be my call, like in a regular meet. Um, but in this type of meet, it's like, okay, let's just knock out a PR on the second, um, go for broke on the third. So, like, if I hit 501 clean, um, then we'll probably load up that record on the third. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I mean, like, it looks like, um, just looking at your bench, man, it looks like it's been kind of on fire lately. Like you've done 220 kilos, which 485 pounds a bunch of times in this prep, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. to the point now, like the most recent time I saw it and I've seen it a couple of times before too. I mean, it's looking like a warm up for you. Um, looking like, you know, an easy opener, something like that. You did do 227 and a half, 501, at least once back in yeah. early February and 227 and a half kilos. Um, I mean, the world record is 233.5. So you're super close. Yeah, and and, close, I mean, yeah, and that close. 501, I mean, it, it moved, it moved pretty well. How did that 501 feel to you though? 
Um, felt easy. I felt like I I I wanted to execute like a little bit longer pause just because I know it's gonna be slightly longer in comp. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of got to take all those things into account. And then like there's just a lot of other stuff that goes into like actually hitting the lift at the meet, right? Like I have to cut, I have to recomp. Um, I have a, I have commands. Um, uh, the bench might be a little bit different. The carpet might be slippery. There's just so many variables that go into it that it's like you don't really know what it's going to be like on the day. But that 501 felt felt good. Yeah. Um, and just thinking about also like qualifying for the U.S. national team, you need to hit a 901.5. Is that even a consider? I mean, is that just like a cakewalk for you, or is that something you're going to try um, to secure on openers or? Yeah, I'm not really. That's not really in my mind going into the meet. Yeah. yeah. I think it should just be like a byproduct of like what I'm doing, mm-hmm. the goals I'm going for. You know what I mean? I mean, I haven't totaled under that. I totaled more than that two years ago. So it's like, I should be fine to hit that. Um, yeah. As long as things go all right, nothing like catastrophic happens. Yeah. I think that'll be. Did you think about coming out to, to nationals in Austin and just like, taking that 901 and just locking that down so it wasn't anything or you just think it's it's such a foregone conclusion you're definitely going to hit it at Sheffield it's tough because I didn't really know who was doing that um I thought Anthony I believe his name's Anthony Anthony yeah yeah yeah. he's super strong I thought he was going to do it and then I was kind of worried like okay well if he does it like he might take the spot he ended up not doing it nobody hit it um the way I'm thinking I was thinking about it for myself is just that um if anyone's been following me for a while, you kind of know I deal with like knee stuff. And and the, the thing with my knees is like, I can train, I can get through a prep, but it's like, I can only train hard for so long, right? And I can only push a certain intensity for like so many times before it's like, okay, I have to dial back. And so even going to that meet, like I was going to have to squat over seven. I was going to have to do a weight cut because like I, I sit pretty heavy. And then I was going to have to squat over seven. I was going to have to pull like, I was going to have to try. It's not like I could just go do 901. Like, I don't do that every week. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's definitely something I would have had to try, pre- like, relatively hard for. And I would have had to cut weight, what, three weeks out? It just wasn't – it just didn't seem like the best idea um, doing that right before Sheffield. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think you made the right decision. Um, all the Sheffield lifters, I think, ultimately made the right right calls. And uh, the table is set now, you know. Um, so there's six open spots. And there's, and there's six, six lifters, you know? So it's like, yeah. we'll see what happens. Like all the Sheffield lifters, as long as you guys go in handle business, looks like the world's team is going to be set. The U S national team is going to be set mm-hmm. reloaded with all the stars from last year, plus some new ones. So, um, it's looking like it's going to be stacked. Um, okay. Getting back into your numbers right now. Um, it looks like you've also hit a 355 deadlift a few times, um, which is only 10 kilos off your comp best. How's deadlift feeling for you right now? Uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, I've, I've switched some things with my squat recently, um, in my stance. Uh So my stance is just a little bit wider. Um, I'm a little bit more bent over. So my squat is very, my squat pattern is very, um, or more similar to my deadlift than it used to be. Okay. And so that, that fatigue is like overlapping a lot. So it's like, I'm not really able to show what my top end is on deadlift because I'm, consistently like i've been pushing squats a little bit more than i have in the past Mm -hmm. um so it it doesn't feel the best right now but i know like after i taper um and at the meet it should feel good that'll be really fun to see because i i can tell from your training like that deadlift has been like a little bit frustrating in the sense of just like you're doing numbers you're doing you're doing uh 355 like a bunch of times and um it's looking fast i mean i mean it's looking really quick um, but I can tell that you kind of have that urge to just like go off, um, and go over 800 or something, you yeah. know? Um, and it's, but like you said, it's kind of conflicting with the squat. Um, speaking of the squat too, I mean, you've also hit 320 a bunch of times. That's again, 10 kilos below your comp best. Mm-hmm. Um, the last one I saw, it looked like an opener. Um, so yeah. how is squat feeling right now? It looks like it's going really well. Yeah. I think, um, it's been a while since I hit a squat PR like in the comp and I think this will be the one cause, um, I normally taper really well for squats. I I almost never hit all time PRs in the gym. Like I don't remember the last time I did. It always happens like when I get to the meet. Um, and recently I hit. Um, I've been hitting the three twenty, but I also hit a three twenty seven. 
I hit a 327, I think, two weeks ago. Uh -huh. um, and that's the most I've ever hit in training. So I know that the way with the way I taper, um, after what I hit in training, I kind of know what's going to be their meet day. Um, so I'm expecting a squat PR for sure uh, when we get over there. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah, it's looking like, I mean, your squad is really looking badass right now. So, um, man, I'm excited because you start adding these numbers up and you're getting damn close to that 937.5. That's a world record that Anatoly hit. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I, I hope that you can get to that. I mean, it'll be either way, like for Team USA, like you're going to put on a show. It's going to be amazing. We're going to, you know, tr be promoting the hell out of this meet. Everyone is. It's the biggest money meet in history biggest most important meet in history so it's something huge and mm -hmm. like you said if you just handle business take care of openers and second attempts you're going to qualify again on the national team go back to worlds and run it back again so i'm um, really excited for all that now looking at this 937.5 uh world record that anatoly has done you know you've done 937.5 before like in training no you did it in a meet six years ago uh, oh that was a quick that was a quick i know i know but i yeah, mean equipped. that's crazy man isn't that funny that your best your all-time best total and equipped you're coming back around to try to hit that raw now yeah, six is, years that, later. is that that actual total i hit or was it more yeah. than that yeah it was the actual total 937 and a half at the uh, collegiate national championships 2017 and yeah, it's, that was my that last was april last equipped meet yeah so i wanted to ask about that uh dude you put Oh shit, you put a shit ton on your total for that meet. Um, your last equip meet that you ever did. Uh, you went from like a 845, 855 um to, to 937. So so take us back in time um to you know old Mikey back when he was Damn. doing equipped stuff coming out of high school. Was that just like your last hurrah? And you just, you know, finally just put it all together and had your best meet ever? Yeah. So um if anyone like you know about equipment, like a lot of it's just about fit, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to know how to use the equipment. You got to be strong, but you also have to have equipment that fits right. And so the previous year, like my equipment, and this sounds, it might sound like an excuse, but it just didn't really fit me correctly. Like it was a little bit loose. Um, my shirt didn't really fit me right. Um, yeah, it just didn't fit right. And I was like a strong kid. I still did well at the meets, but I never was like fully used the equipment. Yeah. Um, but that year... I had been cutting like big, doing big weight cuts down to 93 every year. And then that year I decided like, all right, I'm just going to go up to 105 and just fill out this equip, fill out my frame, but also fill out my equipment all the way. So like the equipment just fit me much better. That's like one of the reasons like the total went up so much. Um, And then I went up weight class. So like both yeah. of those, you're going to get stronger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you've pretty much been a 105 ever since. Yeah. Um, Is that right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really cool. It's like this historic number and then you're going to come back and match it again. Um, so just, you know, what was it like coming up in powerlifting as a single ply lifter and then making the switch over to raw? I mean, and also just for people that don't know, one of the goals with these, these quick check-ins that we're doing is, um, you know, just letting people get to know you a little bit. You've been competing since 2010. I mean, you are like a super OG in the sport. And you're still young. You're still getting stronger, hitting PRs and stuff. Uh, but you're, you've been in the game for over, you know, 13 years now. So just yeah. like, what was it like kind of coming up in the raw on, on the single ply side of things and then switching over to raw? I mean, it's just so different, right? Like, it's like a different, it's almost just a different sport. I mean, you're doing the same movements, but I don't know. The training's different. Yeah. Um, it's there's more of a team aspect with gear because you kind of need it, right? Like you, ha you have to have spotters there. You got to have someone to wrap your knees. You got to like, someone helps you get into your suit. Um, you can't lift off on your own with a bench shirt on. It's just like a bunch of things that like, you have to have a team. Yeah. Um, and so the, the team aspect of it, especially like going through collegiates was like, nice. Like you're doing everything together. Like all of us squat Mondays, the whole yeah. team, I don't know, what is it? 30, 40, however many people on the team. Um, we're all wrapping each other's knees. It's just very like involved. The team is it's like, yeah, it's a team. Yeah. Raw, once you go to raw, um, I feel like the training got super specific to me, right? Because now everyone kind of needs their own thing. Um, and then I got a coach, like which was different. And so now I'm kind of like a lot of my training was more just on my own. Like I'm on running a six-day split. Like there's not a lot of people running six days a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's not a lot of people like benching four times a week. So it's just like a lot of those sessions I kind of got to do on my own now. Um, I wouldn't say better or worse. 
it's better sometimes, worse sometimes. Yeah. Um, so you yeah, encourage, I mean, it's, it, it obviously treated you well. I mean, you put it, you got strong doing it. Um, mm-hmm. it gave you some good experience. Like you get that experience. Like I heard you talking on previous podcasts about how, you know, you don't really get nervous for meets. Um, you don't, you don't get, you know, the stage is not going to be too big for, for Michael Davis. That's for sure. Yeah. Cause you've done a ton of, a ton of competitions and stuff like that. So would you recommend that, you know, young people starting out, go ahead and be on that powerlifting team in high school in Texas and, or Wisconsin or wherever, when they're doing this single ply yeah. stuff. hundred percent because like, you're going to, okay. Like let's, I'm not gonna say it's the best, um, development for raw lifting. Like it's to do gear first. Like you should just do raw if you, if that's what you want to plan to do later, but yeah if you got the team in your school um i don't see why not because like you can train raw the whole year and then you could do like a six week you could be in gear for like six weeks so it's not like it's going to take all your training away or like change everything like it could be very short amount uh, amount of time uh when you just get in the equipment and then compete with the team gain the experience like the platform experience um yeah then that that type of stuff will carry over for sure for sure all right so uh, I don't want to take too much time. So let's fast forward. Um, let's talk about worlds 2022 and your battle with the mill Norling. Um, just to kind of, for people who, who aren't familiar, don't, or don't remember, he had a small lead on you on squat. Um, and then you took a bigger lead on him, uh, in bench going into deadlifts. Mm -hmm. So let's pick it up from there. Like what happened on deadlifts? Yeah. I mean, again, like we were talking about earlier, there's a ton of variables like at meets that are different than, than training. Um, I don't know why I still don't know, really know exactly why I was having grip issues, right? Like it's, you can't really pinpoint it. Um, but after you cut weight, you have to rehydrate. And a lot of times you got to use like, um, you got to use electrolytes, right? Yeah. But it's like, it's hard to be precise with how much electrolytes do I need to like recomp. But like, if you take in too much, your body like bloats up um in deadlift you don't ever want to be bloated right like you've seen like big boys can't get in good positions it's the same thing if you're like you're my size but you get bloated it's the same thing like you can't get in that same position um also your hands blow up your whole body just bloats a little bit Mm -hmm. so i think i don't know this for sure but i think part of the reason i kept having grip issues same thing that happened at nationals is just i was a little bit too bloated um and then i just couldn't i would get out of position my hand would drag my leg a lot Mm-hmm. I don't know. This sounds like some drawn out excuse, but no, no, <laughs> this it's is me like excuse. breaking it down. Like what I think happened. And that's what I, that's what I want people to get was kind of like the play by play behind the scenes, you know? Yeah. Because everyone like, makes their own conclusions about what they saw. So like, if you go to training, like, okay, I would never purposefully like before squat sessions or bench sessions, you would take in a little bit extra sodium. Cause that bloat feels good for training. Like the, you get a little more pop off the chest on bench. You get a little more pop out of the hole on squat. I would never do that on deadlift day. I never do it on purpose because I don't want to feel bloated in my midsection um, to get into these good positions. So I don't know. I, I held 850 in training. Again, I didn't take in any sodium before. And then I go to the meet. I have to do this weight cut. I have to do the recomp. And I can't hold what what was it? Three, three six six year. Eight. Yeah. So that's kind of what I think happened. Um, still don't know. And then the third attempt, I had to come out and I had to switch uh, to mixed grip just to make sure I could secure like a decent deadlift. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was very dramatic because like I said, you had a lead coming in, you opened five kilos heavier than a mill. So you picked up another five. I think you're ahead by like 15, 17 and a half, something like this Mm -hmm. at this point. Um, and then the second, he's only going barely over you. So I'm, I'm watching all this on the live stream and I'm clipping the live stream and posting reels mm-hmm. and, um, and I'm like, oh, we got, we got this. You know what I mean? Like Mikey's Mikey's yep. that guy, we got this. And I know Emil, like I had a scouting report from Matt Gary and from the strength guys and everything. And it's like, he always makes all three deadlifts. He always mm-hmm. makes his third deadlift. So I was, I was like, well, it's not going to matter though, if he's barely, barely going up and you got already got this like 15 key lead. Yep. Um, then you miss a 360. So, so just tell us like what, what happened? Take us behind the scenes. Like um, during that moment, you come off, obviously you're disappointed. It, who made the decision? Like we're going to switch to mixed grip. Are you on the phone with Joey? I know Mike Z and Rodney Elm are the the two head coaches for team USA. So like, what was the conversation like uh, in the warm up room? Yeah, so if you remember at Nats, I had already had like this same issue, right? Yeah. I think the same weight or maybe ah, it was a little bit heavier. 
Um, so because of that, going into the meet, me and Joey had already like I had already tested my mix grip a few times, like in training. Okay. Um, and so we kind of already had it planned. Like if we have issues with this, like you just got to switch to mixed. Um, so I walked off. Mike was like, well, what do you want to do? And, and he was like, should I just put the same weight? I said, yeah, same weight. I'm going to do mixed. And that was it. We didn't even really talk about it past that. I was like, I'm going to do mixed. Okay. And did you go back there? Did you like grab a barbell or anything? Or you just, no, you no. just like. You just I just walked out there and gripped it deep in my palm. Cause like, I know I can hold the weight. That's what's so annoying is like, yeah, I know I'm strong enough to hold this weight, but with hook grip, it's just like, things could get a little funny. Um, so I was like, I'm just going to go grip it like deep in my hand and then basically muscle it up. Cause like my whole take, if you watch the third deadlift is not pretty deadlift. Like no. my whole technique changed for that third deadlift because yeah. it had to, because you got to think if you're hold if you're holding hook grip, that bar sets really low in your hand, right? Yeah. But when yeah. I went out there for mix, I put it like way up here in my palm, yeah. Um, just to ensure that I wouldn't drop it. But now my whole positioning changed. Uh, my whole technique was just like different. It was it was an absolutely gritty performance. I mean, I'm watching this and I'm like, I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it because because to miss um, on grip like that and and to just you know see it all kind of replaying over again what happened at nationals, but this time with more serious consequences. Um, I was heartbroken. And then to see you come out and just like, just do the mixed grip and just smash it. Um, uh, even though you're right, it was ugly. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it wasn't a pretty deadlift. Uh, man, it was, it was amazing. It just shows like the heart that you have and, uh, the ability to overcome adversity and, you know, going back to like the fact that you're such an OG, like, did you, had you done mixed grip a bunch of times before in competition as well? Yeah, I think it was like three years before that I was pulling exclusively mixed. Yeah, um, okay. I made that switch to hook. I never had issues until literally never had issues until Nats. Yeah, um, and then I just had to make that switch back. For sure, for sure. So it wasn't like a crazy, you know. That's what that's what like top level athletes do. You know, you overcome yeah. adversity, you make an adjustment, you adapt, and you put the pressure. And then a mill, of course, you know you. So you had the lead coming off your second deadlift. A mill goes and puts in what he needs to win. Um, you know, he, he's, he, you got the body weight advantage on him. So he has to go up by two and a half kilos. Mm -hmm. He puts a 377.5 on hits it, you know, another gritty performer who, who comes through clutch and hits yeah. his final deadlifts and, you know, ends up edging you out by two and a half keys. And it is what it is. The rest is history. What's, what's your relationship with Emil Norland? I got nothing bad to say about him. We, I mean, there's a language barrier, obviously, right? Because he doesn't yeah. speak much English, but like yeah. the words, we shared some nice words after. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw him at the little bar after. Everyone went out to that little bar after. We talked there. I bought yeah. him a, I bought him a drink. Um, it was nice. cool. I mean, I'm cool. I'm cool with everybody. I'm not like, I don't like to make enemies or anything. Of course. On the platform, we don't got to talk too much. Uh, uh -huh. We can compete, whatever, mind our business. And then afterwards, we can chop it up. Be cool. I love that, man. It's like a good, you're a good sportsman. Um, I think like, you know, you, with growing up in the U S and growing up in Texas with football and all this other stuff around, it's like, you learn, you know, you take an L, you brush it off, you know, come mm -hmm. back, hit, get back to the gym the next week and be ready for the next one. So, yeah. um, you guys have a nice, you know, like a friendly relationship. So are you looking forward to seeing him then at Sheffield? For sure. All right. For sure. I mean, it'll be a nice little, We'll probably say two words to each other before we compete. I'll probably tell him good luck. Um, I'll probably do the little uh, language translator before I go out there, learn some Swedish. Um, I love it. Tell him good luck. And then I probably won't say anything to him until after the meet again, which which is normal, right? That's kind of how it should be. Yep. I love that. I love it, man. You guys do battle and then you shake hands afterwards. That's what sports is all about. Um, it's really cool. And it's cool that you have a rival like that. I mean, rival meet, you know, on the platform, um, who can put up, who can match you with numbers and stuff and make it, make it fun and make it exciting. Yeah. Um, because yeah, because even if that world record nine thirty seven and a half and a half isn't in play, I mean, just the battle between you and Emil running it back. And then we all know like Anatolia probably be back for this year's worlds. Um, mm -hmm. and so we'll have a three-way battle. I mean, the one Oh fives is stacked. It's going to be a blast to watch, um, mm -hmm. you know, this, this rival, this battle head to head battle at Sheffield. And then again at, at worlds. All right. So. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I got a couple of quick hitter questions for you. Um, I really appreciate um, answering all these questions. Um, first thing is, I do want to just quickly, because I don't think a lot of people know, and even I am not super familiar with, 
what happened with your injury? Um, you had like a very serious injury. I, I believe it was very serious. That was almost like a career ending injury. Just tell us like what, like briefly, like what was it and then how you overcame it? Um, it was, I mean, I don't know if it's like, it wasn't really career ending, but it was okay. just, um, a pretty bad, like adductor strain, you would say okay. nothing like tore off the bone or anything, but it was just like a pretty severe strain. Um, and just to make it quick, like my third squat, uh, I tweaked it. So it was already like in a lot, in a good amount of pain when I got to deadlift. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew I probably shouldn't have even taken more than one or two deadlifts, but me just being me and stubborn i was like just load it up i don't care um, and this was this was at that war cat meet this was that war cat yeah yeah USAPL, okay. uh, 2021 yeah 2021 yeah yep. which honestly it sucks to say this now right because i've been training hard for two years but at that time like confidence on all lifts and strength on all lifts was insane like i was just having like back to back to back to back to back good good blocks um, and then I went into that meet. I PR'd every lift, even like hurt. I PR'd like my deadlift. Yeah. Um, your best raw total at nine fifteen. You know, like you said, even yeah, even injured. Yeah. So then I go into that second deadlift. It's hurting, but I'm like, I'm not leaving here without two K, right? Because I wanted a total of two thousand. That was my first time. So I pulled the eight hundred four. I total two thousand. Um, and then right there, I should have just went home. I should have just total two K and went home, but. I don't know. I'm stubborn. And I was like, nah, just load up this. I can hit it and then I'll be fine. I'll rest after. And then, yeah, adductor went. Adductor just kind of gave out on the third. Um, It's hard to say how bad it was because it wasn't even like, you know, a lot of people tear something and there's like a ton of bruising. It wasn't even like that. It was just like, I can't move my leg. Like I can't walk type thing. Um, I was kind of dragging my leg around and like having people carry me and stuff. So, Damn. yeah. So it was pretty serious. I mean, it took, and then it took, I mean, a year later, basically is when you did uh power of team America nationals. Mm -hmm. And I mean, were you hundred percent healthy by that time or, or were you yeah, by that time I was hundred percent, I would say it took about like, it was probably like four months of me really trying to get back to just normal training, not even like not to top in strength, but just training regular where I wasn't in pain. Um, and then after that, I would say, another three months for me to get close to like my where I was strength wise even then like my bench kind of never a lot of people don't know this right and I, I was actually going to talk about this recently like okay I hurt my adductor um and then coming off the adductor injury I'm trying to continue to train my bench uh but obviously I can't use my legs yeah and so that increases my range of motion and I end up straining my pec and so now my and like bad like where I like can't really train my bench either um, and then let's say like uh, another, like I get through all of all these things, like four months later after the initial injury. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, again, like, you don't, we can't really pinpoint exactly what it is, but I start getting some type of compensation thing going, like as I'm recovering from the injury. And then I get like a, a really bad flare up of tendonitis um, to where like, I feel like I couldn't really like, can't get out of bed normal. I can't like do normal things, not, not even train. Like I can't even just do normal things. Um wow. And all of this happened like one after another, after another, after another. And then finally I'm like healthy enough to try to like train into a meet, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was just a long string of, of like little nagging injuries. Yeah. One thing leads to the next. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's weird how, yeah, you wouldn't have expect that an adductor strain would eventually lead to a pec strain. I mean, yeah, it's just, that's, that's, yeah. That's the way things go. All right. Uh, some, some just super quick hitters. I'll let you go. Uh, where'd you grow up? What town? What's your hometown? Uh, San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio. What was your first sport that you played? Uh, soccer. Uh, what's what's the best nickname that we should be calling you? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you like dangerous Michael Davis? Yeah, that's not my favorite. Okay, my... I, I, that's what I got. I got the vibe that you didn't really like that. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to use that one anymore. But I mean, um, I don't really have... I, I mean... People call me Mikey because my Instagram. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know. My hometown people don't call me Mikey. They call like, me Michael, right? Everyone in power calls me Mikey. It don't really matter to me. I feel like it has to be like a natural. Okay. It has to just come. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. But we can get right. away from danger though. Yeah. We could cut the dangerous. 
<laughs> we cut that okay. one. Noted, noted. Danger is gone. Uh, oh, the caution emojis are out. Um, who's a person that you looked up to the most in powerlifting, like when you were coming up or people? Um, Ian Bell was the first one. I'm not sure. Um, he's equipped, so like maybe everybody doesn't know about him. But Thanks when I first got to school at UT, he was like a I think he was a junior. He was just like an upperclassman. He had already won national, he won nationals four times straight. He went to junior worlds four times straight. Um, yeah, so I'll say he's probably the first one. And then like obviously once I switched over to Raw, like just Joey as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you graduate with in UT? Uh, applied movement science, like a Kines degree. That's awesome, man. Um, who who's your favorite football team? Dallas Cowboys. Dallas. Uh oh. All right. All right. And what's your favorite sport to watch? Football. Football, of course. All right. Who's your favorite current rapper? Ooh, current rapper. Who are you listening to currently? You can name a few if you want. I hate saying this. I hate saying that I like Drake a lot, but <laughs> I like Drake. I'm so, I'm one of those. I'm one of those okay. guys. I mean, I listen to other people, like, depends what I'm in the mood for. Like, if I want, like, a grimy, like, grimy New York rap, like, I listen to Griselda or, like, Benny the Butcher, Conway the Machine, all those people. Uh -huh. But, I mean, just, like, on a day-to-day, -day, like, oh, Drake just has, like, music for, like, a lot of situations. Yep, yep. If I'm just trying to crew, chill and listen and, and, like, be in my fields or something, I could just put on some Drake in the car. You know what I mean? I don't know. I There's, love it. I, like, I'm the same way. I asked this question to a bunch of football players and stuff too. And uh, like almost everyone is Drake is like on the high on everyone's list. So yeah. it's definitely like you said, um, what about like all time rappers, all time favorite rappers, like the, from, from the old days. Uh, I like listening to Biggie a lot. Um, I would say like out of nineties rappers, he's probably like number one. All right. Um, that was fast. Kanye was West. Fast. Kanye West is super nice. I mean, yeah, I, I would say those. I listened to some Hove like or Jay Z early growing up, but yeah, I, I like that you called him Hove. A lot of people oh, don't yeah. don't real don't know that nickname anymore. Um, well, what kind of movies are you into? Genre? Uh, me and my wife been watching a lot of horror lately. Like we, so we started this tradition. We we moved to California because she was like uh, in the military. And we would just be by ourselves Halloween. So, like, we couldn't, like, we didn't go out for parties or trick-or-treat or anything. So, we would just watch, like, a Halloween movie or, like, an, an extended um, marathon of, like, Halloween movies, uh, like Michael Myers' Halloween. Yeah. Every Halloween. And then we watch every single new Halloween that comes out. Nice. Um, and then Scream comes out this this Friday. And we just started the Scream marathon this week. So, we watched Scream <laughs> 1 on Monday. We're about to watch Scream 2 tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. So we've been into horror lately and then just like comedy stuff. Nice. All right. Um, do you play any video games? Yeah, well, I'm very I'm a casual video game guy. What games? Uh, I'm playing like some COD right now. I'm terrible. OK, um, I <laughs> bought one to get Potter. some dubs. Find him on, on COD. <laughs> yeah, someone help me, bro. Um, I'm playing some Harry Potter, the new the new Hogwarts game. Uh, what else? I was into Mortal Kombat for a while, like pretty heavy. But I mean, you can only, I feel like you can only play Mortal Kombat so long. Like it's the same. You just yeah. fight one person, you know what I mean? All right. What's your, uh, what kind of, what's your go-to like nice restaurant order? Like you're going out to a nice restaurant. What, what do you look for? Um, I'm just trying to get some steak. Steak. Nice. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your go-to trash food craving? I like Whataburger. Whataburger. Oh man. Patty Mel. Extra patty, extra sauce. Yeah, that's the order. Such a Texas boy. Um, do you drink at all? Alcohol? I do. What, what's your preferred adult beverage? I just drink whiskey. Whiskey on ice. Whiskey on ice. All right. So when you guys see him in Sheffield or in Malta, mm -hmm. um, you know, he wants a whiskey on ice. He wants a double patty burger or a steak. Um, all right, man, that's, we're going to leave it there. Um, I really appreciate you for taking the time out to do this for us, man. This has been a quick check-in with Michael Davis and, uh, really appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you, sh you show out at Sheffield and then beyond. So yes, sir. Thanks, thanks for having me. Appreciate course, you, man. All right. Peace. Later.